Welcome back. The news in details. President Abdel Fattah Sisi instructed on Tuesday fixing the state's approach by managing its resources, lands and facilities across government rates as a constant strategy for the state. During his meeting with Interior Minister Mahmoud Taufi, Minister of Public Business Sector Shem Taufi, Major General Amir Sayyid Ahmed, Presidential Advisor for the Urban Planning, the President also directed to achieve the maximum possible economic and investment revenue for assets affiliated to the public sector to consolidate the state's approach to good management of what it owns. Presidential spokesman Bassem Rodi said the meeting tackled reviewing the plans of the Ministry of the Public Enterprise Sector for the optimum utilization and development of assets and lands belonging to business sector companies at the level of the state. During the meeting, the head of state was also briefed on efforts to count unexploited assets in the public business sector especially land areas and measures planned to be implemented in order to maximize benefits from them. President Abdel Fattah Sisi mourned Chadian President Idris Debi Itno, who was killed on the battlefield in a fight against rebels on Tuesday. In a message, the President sent his deepest condolences to the Chadian people and all Africans for the death of Debi the national and wise leader who exerted his utmost efforts for the sake of his nation and in serving African causes and dealing with many challenges. The stunning announcement of Debbie's death came just hours after electoral officials had declared him the winner of the April 11th presidential election, paving the way for him to stay in power for six more years. Chad's president Idris Deby Itno died on Tuesday from wounds sustained in battle after three decades in power. The shock news came only the day after the 68-year-old career military man was proclaimed the winner of a presidential election that had given him a sixth term in office. The army also announced a curfew and border closures after the death as well as the dissolution of government and the parliament. France paid tribute to Chad's president as a courageous friend and great soldier whilst urging stability and a peaceful transition in the African country after his shock death. A statement emphasized France's insistence on the stability and territorial integrity of Chad as it faces a push by rebel forces towards its capital. On Monday, the army had claimed a great victory in its battle against the rebels from neighboring Libya, the front for change and concord in Chad or fact. Ministers and high-ranking military brass had said Monday that Debbie was in the region on Saturday and Sunday after the rebel offensive. The army said he'd been commanding his forces at the weekend as they battled rebels who'd launched a major incursion into the north of the country on election day, April the 8th. The army said a military council led by the late president's 37-year-old son, Hamad Idris Debbie, it know a four-star general, would replace him. The council has already met to draw up a transitional charter without further delay. Debbie's son oversaw his father's security as head of the elite presidential guard and often appeared alongside him wearing dark glasses. Debbie had ruled Chad since taking power in 1990. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli headed a high-level delegation to the Libyan capital Tripoli on Tuesday. During the visit, Medbouli held talks with head of the Libyan National Unity Government, Abdel Hamid Debeba, over a number of issues of mutual concern before the two premiers held a joint press conference. Medbouli and Debeba also signed a number of cooperation agreements in various domains. The delegation includes ministers of electricity, petroleum, manpower, education, international cooperation, health, communications, housing, transportation, civil aviation, and trade, as well as head of the State Investment Authority and a number of representatives of investors and concerned bodies. Foreign Minister Semeh Shukri arrived in Congo's capital, Kinshasa, on Tuesday on the fourth leg of his African tour on Tuesday. Earlier in South Africa, Shukri delivered a message from President Sisi to South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa over developments through the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam file and Cairo's stance regarding the issue. Shukri said Egypt appreciates efforts by South Africa in the GERD file during its chairmanship of the African Union. 
The top diplomat also reviewed during the meeting with the South African leader the outcome of the latest meetings in Kinshasa, DR Congo. He said Egypt has proved during the meetings that it has a genuine political will to reach a serious, nego serious negotiation path that would lead to a binding legal deal over the operation and filling of the dam, one that would achieve the interests of the three countries and preserve their water rights. Shukri's stop in South Africa was the latest in a tour that included a number of African countries to deliver messages from President Sisi to their respective leaders over developments to the Gerd file and Cairo stance with regards to the issue. The Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources detailed the technical policies related to Ethiopia's recent announcement on completing and operating two bottom outlets at the disputed Ethiopian dam. The ministry said in a statement that Ethiopia's claim that the two bottom outlets are capable of passing the average flow of the Blue Nile is incorrect, and it added that the current flow capacity of each of the two outlets do not exceed 50 million cubic meters per day, which is below average and insufficient for the needs of the two downstream countries. It further explained that this year, Second filling of the dam and by retaining a large amount of water in accordance with Ethiopia's plans will significantly harm the river system. According to the statement, the two downstream countries of Sudan and Egypt will suffer in the event of a medium flow and that the situation will further worsen in the event of a low flood flow. The statement also said that this point highlights the necessity of reaching a legally binding agreement that includes a clear coordination mechanism. Minister of Health Hele Zaid held phone talks with the Chinese ambassador in Cairo, Liao Lijing, during which they discussed cooperation to provide coronavirus vaccines. Health Ministry spokesman Dr. Khaled Megahid said the talks discussed sending a new batch of 500,000 doses of the Sinopharm vaccine through April. Megahed also said the call discussed preparations by the two sides to sign a deal for the joint production of COVID-19 vaccines between Egypt and the uh, Sinovac company in the coming days. The health ministry reported 852 new coronavirus cases and 40 deaths and said it is following up on developments around the clock over the pandemic or any possible contagious diseases.